<laughs> You're just now realizing this? No, no, I've known it. I'm setting. just... I'll stop crap. Hey. Yeah. So, what day is it, Daniel? It's Friday. It's Friday afternoon. Yeah. And we just now are sitting down for yeah, the first are. time in nine years. <laughs> it feels like nine years. <laughs> I feel like I've lost nine years off my life. I feel like I laid down in that machine from Princess Bride. Right. And he was like, that was the feeling of one year draining from your life. Oh, we're in. How exciting is this? The distillery. Oh. Now, the, the main bits for the most part are in place. Inside. Inside uh, the tasting room. Now, yeah. we've still got to finish out the distillery room. Uh, and that's where we're scrambling to get that done because on Monday, what are, what are we getting? What do you mean? What are we getting on Monday? Yes, I totally forgot about that. I totally left my brain. This guy. Dude, I'm so busy today. <laughs> I seriously forgot. Oh, yeah, it's a big I, deal. It's a this huge, is a huge deal. deal. I have to, it was totally left my head. 12 barrels of our first product are arriving on Monday. Right. Now that is MGP Bourbon. Right. It's coming from one of their warehouses and yep. we'll find out when the bill of lighting shows up which warehouse it was shipped from. <laughs> MGP, for those people that are familiar with whiskey, it's a huge whiskey maker. Midwestern and, grain products. Yes, and sourcing whiskey from MGP is kind of like, eh. Well, the, 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 the reason why I say this is because for a really long time, people were doing this in a really shady way. Mm -hmm. They were not being transparent. Yes. Which everything that we're doing in the distillery, in the community, in the growing of this thing, we try and be extremely transparent in this video, like every once in a while we just sit down and we kind of share a specific piece of what we've been working on, what we've done, how we did it. Yep. And this is one of those videos we wanted to share with you how the marketing fits into this and is it just an accidental thing where Rex and Daniel are, you know, we just sort of stumbled it. into it. I mean, yes, a lot of what we do is planned, more than half of what we do is planned intentionally. Right. But there's always, you have to leave room for the always, well, who knows where that will lead right. and be ready to, which is Rex's strong point, be ready to, we had a plan. We're five steps into a 10 step plan and everything's changing. The whole horizon has altered before our very eyes. Now what? No, one of the reasons we're moving from sourcing stuff to doing our own products is because of you guys. Yeah. That was not our original plan. Our original plan was let's just source shit and it's have this story. We'll use it as a school. From as many places as possible. Yeah, whatever. We'll figure it out. And then you guys got involved and you were so interested in what could be created. We're so like, we're doing oh, everything. We're sourcing, we're finishing, we're, we're going to make things. Uh, and basically Basically, all the things that happen inside of a whiskey distillery that nobody gets to see. Yeah. Uh, we want to show you that. Um, but specifically regarding like the transparency issue. Yeah. I've been doing video for a couple of decades now. Yep. And here's where it can start to feel shady whenever people hear the word marketing. Mm -hmm. Is because just like sourcing for big people like MGP, when people aren't honest and transparent about it, yeah. then it's sketchy and it's shady and it's kind of slimy. Because you feel like you're trying to be tricked into something. Yeah, and the way that uh, I've approached marketing for two decades and the school really champions is working with shit that's actually there. Yeah. Not making up crap out of whole cloth and trying to convince people that it's true. It's basically, hey, let's figure out what's really there in a, in a person, in a business, and then let's, fi let's figure out why that is special, what makes that interesting, what makes that relevant. And then, and this is the tricky part, this is what people spend years learning, how do we communicate that in the most relevant and effective way possible? And efficient. Yeah. And one of the reasons that uh, Rex got involved in the channel, uh, one, it was at first it was just Rex came up and drank some whiskey while I was doing the videos, and then pretty quickly we realized, wait a minute, Rex has been trying to get business owners to do this for two decades. Why not use the Whiskey Vault right. as a way to show them, here's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this basically- I'm gonna implement all the things I'm trying to explain to you. It's been uh, an elaborate case study that originally I was just gonna do it and then take it back to the clients. It was like, see, this is what you're supposed to be doing to sell. It works. Uh, as you know, it's turned into something way more. Yeah, but early on, if you, if you were paying attention, you saw that, that Rex implemented things in our channel in stages. So if there was a list of 10 things you should do if you're doing a YouTube channel, we didn't implement all 10 up front. We implemented one at a time, about every few months. 
and then we watched to see what that one implementation would cost. Which was really entertaining to see in the comments. People were like, hey guys, you should really do this. It's a, yeah, these are really basic It's YouTube a common tricks. best practice, but we wanted to measure step by step which of these quote-unquote best practices actually made a meaningful, measurable difference. Now marketing, I, I teach this at the school, and it's one of the things we talk about because we talk about uh, manipulation versus influence. Yeah. And manipulation is when everyone goes mental over marketing, when they feel like they're being manipulated, yep. right? Same thing with MBG, MGP. When you feel like you're being manipulated, that's when shit goes haywire, right? right? But influence is an art of human persuasion, and it's an understanding of how people work, and, uh, and finding the things that matter to people, and then going after those things. The difference between them is uh, who gets the choice. Yeah. If, you're, if you start here and end up here, and you don't feel like you had any choice and you were sort of shoved into that corner, that's called manipulation. Right. If you started here and chose to step over here, that's influence. Right. And the other thing we say is you can spot manipulation instantly because it falls apart when the lights turn on. Yeah. It's almost but, like, I was thinking it, whenever somebody's good, the only thing you have to do is like, hey, it's, don't overthink it. Quit just trying go. to like, quit trying to like say these ten dollar words and all this flowery bullshit. Just pull back the fucking curtain yeah. and let people see. And so, what I've done with Daniel in the vault has been a lot of fun because, like, the ball busting mm -hmm. and the giving people a hard time. Yep. As the director, with the kind of shit that I give you, I've been doing that with clients for damn near 20 years, yep. giving them shit, putting myself in the prospective customer's shoes. But you never get to hear that. Having the rude thoughts that you know <laughs> somebody would have and they would say it if they were you know, impolite enough to say yeah. those kinds of things. <laughs> I would always be that voice behind the scenes, right. pulling out that good stuff. But with Daniel, I got to do that on camera, yeah. <laughs> which was amazing because it's not me pretending, like those are actually my thoughts. But I get to have all that credit of, wow, now we can see the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you though, like, it, it, it's funny, the phrase uh, pulling back the curtain, it's actually true because if you think back to Wizard of Oz and you got the wizard, he's trying to be magnificent, and then the dog goes shroom, and there's this old punchy little old dude yeah. pulling levers, right? But if you even watched the movie, that guy for the end of the movie mm -hmm. is an amazing character. He's, uh, you can identify with him, right. he's kind of lovable, yep. he's a little bit of a klutz, and that character is a far more powerful character in the movie right. than the giant, fake, magnificent wizard head. Well, it's to, specifically to that point, it's interesting it's that you bring flaws. it up. Because what that character is doing is directly addressing the most common issue that people have whenever they're trying to figure out, should I get in front of a camera and do videos? It's imposter syndrome. Yes. Nobody feels Who am like, I? like I, I'm not smart enough, I'm not experienced enough, I'm too old, I'm too fat, my voice sounds weird, there's people better qualified to do this. Yep. And then if they ever do get in front of a camera, they feel like, okay, well I have to put on my best shirt and I have to do my hair perfectly, no. and I have to stand in the perfect posed way. This is my best side, get the good angle. No. And then nobody can connect with that. Yeah, because so, humans uh, prefer flaws. Accompanied with. Identifiable flaws. Right, they prefer flaws, uh, flaws accompanied with. There's something meaningful there. And that's what yeah. Daniel has brought to both channels. A meaningful, deep level of knowledge and experience whenever it comes to whiskey. Because but, if it was just me, it would be some very, asshole on camera and yeah. nobody would watch. But still very flawed yeah. and not bothering to hide that. Being brought onto the board at the school, mm -hmm. uh, one of the main things is community building. Because one of the things that was always just kind of theory crafted, doing content creation with clients and doing the vault with you, was like, well, we can make content for days that is designed to pull back the curtain and connect with people who appreciate that kind of personality, appreciate yeah. that kind of information, but can that be pivoted into a community yeah. where people are just, it's not just the, uh, the person on screen you're connecting with, but it's other human beings who also like that person, that, yeah. that group, that information on the screen. And the Whiskey Tribe, you magnificent bastards, have proved that point to a ridiculous degree. Absolutely. So that's one of the main things, one of my roles uh, it's an unpaid position, by the way, so it's not yeah. like, wait, Rex got another job? He's supposed no. to be focusing on whiskey. No, it's like four times a year, and by the way, meeting, and then I give people advice. It was the Whiskey Tribe gathering that changed our entire plan for everything that we're doing. Yeah. The videos were one cool thing, and getting a lot of subscribers, that was cool. But when the tribe became its own entity, 
our whole lives changed. <laughs> uh, and our whole plan for this distillery changed. Yeah, and we go deeper into that in the uh, Magnificent Future of the Whiskey Tribe video. We'll put it up here. Mm -hmm. You can have a path and a plan, and you can go down that path, but whenever you're putting something out into the wilds of Facebook or YouTube, mm -hmm. or you know, basically anywhere where there's other people thrown at it, human beings are kind of messy things. Uh, and yes, having that directional destination of I'm on a ship and I want to reach land on the other side of this ocean, <laughs> yeah. but not necessarily committed to, I have to reach this port on this day, at this time, yeah. I want this for breakfast. It's like, no, 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 we'll get across the ocean and we're gonna get to, to the promised yeah. land. But and then you'll be grateful for the breakfast you get, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that works is if the whole time, with every decision, you have consistent cultural guidelines. If you know, these are this is who we are, this is what we won't do, this is what we will do, and this is what matters to us, then every decision is going to be culturally consistent, and it, following all the rabbit trails will land you somewhere that looks like you planned it. Yeah. Because at every decision point, you chose what was consistent with the culture and the vision. There, Daniel and I know full well <laughs> that there are uh, people who adore whiskey and adore reviews that cannot stand us and our vibe. Oh yeah, and that, my, my dad's you sort have of among them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you have to, and that's another one of those things. You have to be very comfortable uh, with the fact that if you're doing anything at all interesting, we've said this in videos before. All the time. There's going to be people that absolutely hate it. Yeah. But there's going to be just as many, if not more, that that's. God, that's my guy. If that's nobody dude, really reacts negatively, right. you didn't do anything worth doing. Right. Because what you got was everyone going like, that's real nice, sweetie. So, it's, it's, <laughs> here's the thing. The, the number of times I'll be in the, in the comments in any one of our um, videos, and somebody will say something like, oh my gosh, I can't believe who, who thumbs down this. There's always somebody, like, somebody thumbs down it. And uh, they don't understand uh, if we're getting less than 10% thumbs down, yeah. it's not a good thing. Because that means we're not reaching new people. It's that. If you're not getting at least 10% thumbs down, you're just talking to the same group of people over and over again. Yeah, to and grow. Brushwood can go into really uh, a lot of depth here. So go look at our ones that we did that were intended to grow, like the PewDiePie video. Right. Go look at the percentage of thumbs down on that one. That's more like it should be. Right. So in, in the, we have very intentionally decided to focus on uh, community content much more so than discovery content because yeah. discovery content is content that is made to reach people who aren't your regulars. Right. PewDiePie is discovery content. Top uh, 10 Top beginners. 10 list is discovery content. Yeah. But these are the kinds of things that you can go into any kind of video endeavor, any kind of channel building. But at the end of the day, there is uh, a methodology. There is a plan. There is a process. And the good news is it's a process that's actually honest and it's not based on bullshit. Yes. Uh, and Brushwood and I, coming up, we're uh, teaching a class. That's in July, it's the middle of July. Yeah. We'll link to it somewhere. Yeah, so and, uh, it's how to build a tribe with video. Yes. And um, basically everything that you've seen us doing on our channels, the things that you've been uh, seeing Brian doing, you can do that and it doesn't have to be sketchy, shady, marketing, clickbaity bullshit. It's, it can be an honest representation of who you are and what you're all about, and you can have fun doing it. We've said this many, many times. The biggest surprise that neither of us were counting on is the community of magnificent bastards that stepped up and made this not just, hey, let's you know measure some stuff and do a case study, but holy shit, these are like, these are our people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool, man. Yeah. So thank you, you magnificent bastards. Now, we're sitting here drinking 28 year old whiskey because today is the day that begins the quarterly challenge. Quarterly challenge. And uh, what it is, is we're just gonna go a week. Anybody who wants to join in and it's totally voluntary, we're gonna spend a week not consuming alcohol. Mm -hmm. The Whiskey Vault episodes are gonna be focused on other things. That's a community check in, a little bit of quality control. For Maybe a life. cleanse. Yeah. A little bit of a cleanse. Sure, why not? <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. Switch to, to fig juice only and do a real cleanse. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, it is obviously optional. There's a list after the quarterly challenge is complete, and everybody that successfully did it uh, can put your name on that list, and then we're gonna take that list and put it on the website, the list. Yeah. Of whiskey challengers, you completed the second quarterly challenge. That's right. So, one of the things we're gonna do is pick at random, and we're not really sure how we're gonna pick it yet. Uh, we're gonna give away these posters. Now, these were mailed to us 
from Emily Mercedes. Emily Mercedes is she is an artist, and we are going to link to her stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, she hand painted these whiskey posters. Oh, nice. And so what we're gonna do? I've been sitting on these since January. Your hands clean? No. Sorry, Emily. We meant to get on this significantly sooner, and just didn't do it. Choosing two names. Yeah, we'll choose as many as we have posters. Okay. Oh. Wow, she sent us some legit shit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wait, wait, there's more. Dude, there's there's two in that one. Ah, uh, look at these things, man. This is the Rip Van Winkle. These are hand painted, dude. Yeah. Can you believe that? That was awesome. The Pappy Van Winkle. Yeah, even up close. Right there is the Pappy Van This Winkle. is the bourbon one. Yeah. So there's what three? They're gonna choose. So there's at least three from the whiskey challengers list. Yeah. And thank you for uh, checking out a little bit more of a low key episode. Yeah. Quarterly challenge. Mm -hmm. As soon as that's done on uh, next Saturday at noon, Austin time, uh, we're gonna be doing the, the the live stream for people in the Patreon. Uh, I think it's Chiefs and above. Mm -hmm. uh, the drink stream. So we'll come out of the the quarterly challenge together with some glorious whiskey. That's right. Uh, magnificence. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us.